Welcome to the show, All About Artists, and my name is Susan Rose. And today we welcome our guest, Erica H. Adams, known for her watercolors, photographs, and digital media. Erica will be discussing her new solo show, exhibits in Boston and New Bedford. And welcome to the show, Erica. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Susan. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you and all your wonderful work here. Thank you. Um, uh, the first thing I'd like to ask is, um, Erica, where uh, do you live and work? Um, I moved in uh, 2001, in the August, to Cape Cod from uh, East Arlington on Cambridge border. And I continued to commute until the um, pandemic uh, to teach. And I taught almost 40 years at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts, now called SMFA at Tufts University. And I taught painting, watercolor in particular. I taught a course in glass um, and also a course in Venice, Italy. And um, yeah, and so I also did a lot of remote work mm -hmm. and I had been starting to write 1998 uh, for what ended up to be a succession of three uh, publications, two quarterlies and an online magazine, okay. ostensibly about glass based in Belgium. And I wrote about whatever I wanted in the arts. It was kind of a philosophical branch of my thinking process. And um, I also curated some shows. I, I'll talk about that uh, later. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, basically that. Yes, and so could you give us an overview of your career or not? Yeah, uh, essentially I started at a museum school, we called it, the School of the Museum of Fine Arts. And I wanted a very kind of classical um, education. And the thing I had in high school in upstate New York was learning the technique of Vermeer and Rembrandt, underpainting, making all the materials. And I didn't realize until later that it would uh, influence me as a watercolor painter uh, oh. because of all the layers. And that's also how I did photography. I had many, many layers of unusual uh, layers that I would make until the final product. What did you photograph? Huh? What did you photograph? Uh, I didn't photograph anything per se. Per se? I, I was more of a collage process oh, and I painting see. and I things like that. I was interested in digital art in the 80s, uh, mm -hmm. but it wasn't really available, so I, I made it up. And by the time it came out, I was, uh, after 10 years of doing that, I started to do um, animation, which created mm. a narrative. Uh, I How realized impressive. that all. Yeah, all the photographs, the individual photographs I made together, strung together, created a narrative. And so the work was always had a narrative aspect to it. Mm -hmm. And um, then uh, when I started to make prints and I could alter the prints in variations, I saw uh, even more playability that watercolor and animation have. And I had this push-pull all the time between mm -hmm. something that was virtual and something that was physical. Um, and the ultimate goal was transparency and um, a lot to do with politics because I grew up in a very political family. Uh, my father was a think tank analyst mm -hmm. and I made photographs with him and I painted with my mother uh, from a very young age when I was four and seven with photography. Oh. And so... I started to do abstraction because the narrative seemed redundant to me. And it, it had a lot of poetry, but it wasn't enough. It, it was too particular. And I wanted something more expansive and mm -hmm. open to interpretation, but that would slow people down, including myself, <laughs> and um, allow for more open interpretation rather than something specific. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when Aretha Franklin sings, yeah. you know, what that man was wearing for his shoes and what exactly, bar he went to. Yeah. Exactly. So I was like, that was enough already. So I started making abstraction. And then finally, I think around 2008, um, during the summer, there were a lot of birds uh, in my area of Cape Cod where I moved 
in 2001, mm -hmm. and uh, I started making a kind of verticals, and where I heard a sound where it started would be the strongest and it would dissipate, or they say decay in music, mm -hmm. right? And so finally, I ended up making, in 2015, mm -hmm. I did a lot of other things that were still narrative, a whole bunch of work, I would say, between 2014 and 16, and I had a show at the Cape Cod Museum of Art with five women from New York, all abstract painters, mm -hmm. uh, but different than my input. And so the, the verticals in this case mm -hmm. would represent Boston or culture, mm -hmm. and then the things that were decaying or in this verdant oxidized painting um, that were more rough, mm -hmm. were Cape Cod was starting to infiltrate my thinking and my process and my work. This is watercolor mixed with acrylic gel. Oh. And there's an underpainting under here that I use things that were corrosive and that bubbled up and oh. created all kinds well, of textures. No, yes, I noticed that texture. Yeah. And this is the more, uh, the beginning of that series. Um, mm -hmm. On my Instagram account, you can see the whole series of what I did. And it's much more a textural and explosive and corrosive. And then, um, I was just sick. There was 2015, and then during the pandemic, jumping ahead, uh, uh, everyone had more time and unfettered time, and I realized I was coming back full circle to things I had done when I was younger. And there was a book of uh, Hindu tantric art where they, on a small piece of paper, because I always preferred small rather than large, something that was more intimate, more tactile, mm -hmm. and. Um, I saw that when they would meditate on this piece of paper, they would put an uh, image or shape, a shape mm -hmm. down of a certain color and then think again and put something some. It was asymmetric and uh, it wasn't necessarily geometric like tantric art, uh, but it was meditative. And mm -hmm. that had been my original impulse uh, when in 1979 I won the fellowship and was in the Museum of Fine Arts with my watercolors. Mm -hmm. And so those were nature-based mm -hmm. and they were one image next to another image. And those two images juxtaposed followed into my photography. And then when I came full circle back in the um, pandemic, around 2020, I would turn music on and I would make drawing like a a gesture and dance on the mm -hmm. piece of paper. Like I do a bunch of them in the evening and then I would pick one the next day and start to work in watercolor mm -hmm. on top of it, in silence usually. Uh, and that was just the start. I didn't use music except as a starter mm -hmm. uh, for things um, because it was so silent in the pandemic. It was amazing. But it was also that very meditative and I was mm -hmm. trying to calm myself down because it was so panic-inducing, oh, sure. right? right? And so different things came out. And yeah. in terms of styles, I'm more typically like a so-called postmodern artist where abstraction is a language, realism is a language, mm -hmm. um, different modes and styles, and maybe more one is more useful than the other in a certain painting. I don't set out to do this. This is what happens. And I was describing to someone today that, you know, I, I sit down and I do something and I think I have enough history. I just, okay, I want this here, I want that there. And to entrust the intuition mm -hmm. and trust the process as we called it at museum school um, and just let it happen. And so I'm always surprised when I what finish. Happens. And I said, what was that? What did I do? Yes, that's exactly um, what a lot of, not a lot of artists are like that. You know, yeah. I have that same quality that you're talking about, then at the end you say, what, what did I do? What right. did I do? You <laughs> right. know, I didn't even know I did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and uh, there's a whole series of these. I mean, I did around 60 in those two years. And this one was done in June of 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, the show that I had last year, 2023 in Boston was called Spirit in the Dark. It came from Aretha Franklin's song, which was mm -hmm. from a gospel album. And she was complaining basically about what was happening during the civil rights period. And, and she just felt like she was a spirit and everything was dark around her. So I thought that was really, really great um, a theme and name for the, the show, because that's how I felt during the uh, pandemic. And so I was responding to everything 
that was outside of me and trying to sort of calm myself down by focusing, which is mm -hmm. very good. And so this one was responding to George Floyd. Uh, and I thought, well, we were supposed to stay inside and everyone's outside, they're gonna get sick, right? So there was a lot of pent up energy that mm. exploded. And so you the colors in this one are somewhere between cartoons on Saturday morning and maybe we could say Hollywood and, and things like that. So this was my response to, uh, it's called uh, Where the Roses Grew, because I was thinking about my mother's neighborhood and how roses mm -hmm. grew and when you went back, now, no one grow, grows roses. It takes, you have to stay home all the time. Yeah. And there was another one my brother has. And um, so that was one of that series. And that was reviewed by Artscope. And let's see. Then the larger one, um, it's Blues Progression, uh, really is about exactly that. It's in blues, they talk about a progression of a chord Mm -hmm. and how that goes up and down and creates the rhythm and the feeling and everything like that. So I would say that's even more abstract. It's mm -hmm. not as cartoonish as this response to yes. the George Floyd. I see that. Yeah, and that was mm -hmm. in a show that I curated in 2023 called Above Us Only Sky with 13 artists from Boston and some from North Adams. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that, w that was that one. And... Um, mm -hmm. The, the, the long panoramic shape, uh, mm -hmm. was, it was intuitive. I had the paper, but in that case, I cut uh, oblong paper the long way, and I got yeah. two paintings out of it. It was the idea that it allowed for more space, taking in peripheral vision, mm -hmm. and that the eye would move all around the paper and never stop. So again, during the pandemic, when everything was still and we were confined, yeah. it was a way to have freedom and to have more space. And so that was the reason for the paper. Yeah, and all, all of them were, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, watercolor. Every single one was watercolor. Um, would you be able to tell us um, a little bit about your solo um, show? Your sure. Exhibit? Um, in Boston and uh, New Bedford? Yeah, so the solo show in New Bedford is at the Colo Colo Gallery, which mm -hmm. is in Rod Rodney French Boulevard, and it's in an old textile mill factory, and he does one-person one shows. Um, that's gonna be in July. It's gonna go from July 4th until the 28th. The gallery's open Thursday through Sunday from one to five, and the opening will be on the 13th. Uh, from three to five on Saturday uh, in July. And essentially what I'm gonna do is the work that was in the solo show last year, The Spirit in the Dark, uh, that will, is now a traveling show. I have another venue that's possible. Everything, of course, is for sale, you know. Okay. And um, we're gonna select pieces from that, and, and this one also uh, will beautiful. probably be in or a couple, I have six mm -hmm. long ones like that. Uh, we're gonna six. choose from those, yeah. Oh, really? And then I have um, maybe 50 to choose from that I've been doing since last fall of the series that I'm now calling Available Light. So it will be a selection of the watercolors from Spirit in the Dark and then the new ones called Available Light. And whatever he decides to put up, I guess, is what's gonna be in the it's show. Gonna, it's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they get the... Yeah. So in any case, this is, <coughs> these are all ones that I did recently. And yes. um, this one uh, is called Bioaccumulation. It took four years, but I got COVID. And this is, I think, what I was feeling like. And I was looking for little kind of openings. So you can see all kinds of openings around what's dark. Everything's really oh, yeah. kind of connected. Yeah. And also, there's a difference between these two. This yes, is a smoother paper. It's slightly smaller. This mm -hmm. is no longer a panoramic shape. It's more confined, mm -hmm. uh, but it really depends how I use the space for whether it seems small or large or like that. And um, this paper is rougher. And this mm -hmm. was a Saint Armand paper from Montreal, and this is Shizen from India. And oh. they're both handmade. They're both made of, I mean, this is handmade, this is machine made, both made of cotton, you know, oh, yeah. recycled cotton. 
actually my paintings are biodegradable. So in any case, uh, this is cotton. And so I started to also get more into things like this where you know, there's an interaction, a, a material interaction, which mm -hmm. is what I'm picking up from what I was doing here. Yes. And the ones that followed this series in 2014 yeah. to 16, this was um, more textural than this one. This mm -hmm. is quite smooth. And so then I'm going to take some of these down. I guess I can put this yeah, here. Yeah, right there. That's yeah. good. And, um, oh, that's nice and bright. Yeah. Isn't it? So I started to take the, the, uh, the paint off as much as let things like this happen, material, chemical, geological kind of interactions. Um, it's almost a degradation or a min mineralization of, of mm -hmm. the work. And it's a little bit like stained glass, but I think that it has a lot of luminosity to it. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a kind of grayness, a distinct grayness, I think, that pervades all this available light series. That I, This is all 2024. And so there's little areas of light. And I think there's a quality of stained glass to all of it this work. I mean, people tell me this all the time. Mm -hmm. And I taught glass, and I taught a lot of uh, students of glass. I wrote about glass for all, so many years. Um, I think it's just part of my nature. And watercolor and, and glass are very, very close, too. Mm -hmm. So let's see if we can get this one down. Hold that for you. And this oh. one, I mean, this has a, this, it's warmer, yeah. and less gray, and it, it moves, like this mm, one moves at a, a little yeah, angle. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Ooh. So I think this is a, a, a easier to like. It, it's smooth and it keeps, there's a circulation, very similar to yes. that one. Yes. The, the colors are simpler. Too. There's less mm. uh, cacophony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think this one's called Entwined. Mm -hmm. I wrote it on the back. And then... Okay. Yeah, we got puns. And this one is called Moonlit, but there's still a kind of grayness and with color coming through things, there's different kinds of rhythms that are going on. So this is part of, you know, I want uh, to slow me and other people yeah. down. Uh -huh. I want more tactility. Mm -hmm. And there's also a difference between the pandemic when we were closed inside and, yeah. you know, researching on TV, being entertained by the internet, by Facebook, connecting that way. And we're sort of crawling out of this, you know, uh, way of, of being enclosed. Yeah. And I think we're all acting a little bit strange with each other. <laughs> so <laughs> this, is, this is called Moonlit. And moon, moon, uh, the moon receives the sunlight or, or mm -hmm. available light mm -hmm. uh, indirectly on its surface. And so that's where the light's starting to come in here, yeah. So, and it's been said there's a lot of architectural textural kind of mm. feeling to this. Yes. And it, it feels a little bit like stone. And all that, mm. I think, is, I can't say it's intentional, because, uh -huh. but it's part of who I am and how I think. I, I love urban spaces. I'm living on Cape Cod, and, you know, yeah. I'm still kind of an urban brat, you know. <laughs> I, I don't do those country things, so, yeah. So this is when the light is starting to come in. And I'm going to put this down here Surely. so it's easier. And this is the last one that I brought, and it's called Proteus. And uh, you can say uh, there's also, a, there's a sort of, in theater, there's A, B, A, and then in the center, is the denime or the, the peak of mm -hmm. the drama, and then it goes down to a conclusion. And so I still think I have these kind of tripart things. I think it, it's off, often evident right in this one as well. But also what's happening mm -hmm. in this one and this one is that you, you, you find a form, and then it goes underneath something, and it comes yes. back up. Right? Yes. And then you find another form somewhere. So there's a lot of movement. There is. I noticed that. That's yeah. an awful lot of movement in your yeah, work. Yeah. And the translucencies like are there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So that, that's basically, you know, s some of these. It depends, again, on the gallerist. I'm not used to this. I'm used to, like, calling my own shots, but, you know, it's his gallery, so. That's right. He's, a, he's, <laughs> he's, gonna, <laughs> he's an artist. He can, he can make his own thing, and, you know, he'll probably have a really interesting point of view that I never thought of. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, Isn't it always that way? Yep. Cheers. Yeah. I have some more. Oh, I'm 
That feels good. Um, basically, um, you were talking about the pandemic um, and how, I guess, really is uh, how you um, changed your work. And uh, we talked about that. And that was really interesting. I, I, you know, I, I really, the way you described it, you know, and in your paintings, it was, it was very interesting. I'm sure the audience is going to love it. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. Oh, I do. I yeah. do. I, I love it. It's a learning curve for all of us. That's the whole point. Yeah, I think yeah. it's the whole point. Because people really don't get art, you know, and it's good to have somebody come on and explain, you know, the process. That was the other thing, too, with some of the artists. They didn't, they didn't really talk about the process of what they Well, I've been writing and, and, and teaching for, you know, decades. Yeah. So for me, it comes easily. And mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all part. I think art is very healing. You mm -hmm. know, first, anytime you focus, uh, that calms you down. Right. And then that you meditation. let your mind and you get some freedom. And then you make something. That's, that's always positive. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. It is a positive thing. I think art, art in itself is positive. Um, uh, well, I think we just uh, said, well, what um, is your work about? Oh, uh, yeah. Or did we really get into that? Um, well, I mean, I think there is, there is um, always that strain uh, of, of something being political. In my generation, boomers are like, the personal is political. And I, again, I grew up in a very political family, so that's always there. And then that leads to a kind of self-analysis, and mm -hmm. I get that to a contemplative mode I've had all my life. I mean, it's me. Um, I've been in, inspired by so many different kinds of art, like the Chinese scrolls oh. in the Museum of Fine Arts that my mother took me to. I like the fact that a narrative unfolded and they could do so much with so little, which is watercolor, it's just paper and color. Mm. It couldn't be simpler or yeah. co more complex. And I like the long Gauguin where there's, you know, where are we going, you know, all that. And that's a kind of narrative that folds out. Um, but uh, let's see. I, th I think that um, the, the political, as I say, it's yeah. subsumed in that. You don't have to know about a specific incident, and if you mm -hmm. find out the circumstances it was made of, that gives you another layer. But I think that comes through there. There's a kind of anxiety and yeah. a kind of cartoonness that goes on here. This one is more about geology and, and maybe the body and things like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to talk about the show. I'm also having a show yes. at um, Atlantic Works Gallery about immigration, and mm -hmm. I'll show work that I did in, mm -hmm. a, in 2000 at a residency on the Russian border, and it was in Poland, oh, and okay. it was for a month in 2000. And I went there because my grandmother immigrated from a place called Danzig that was, mm -hmm. na it was from 1900 to 1945, a walled city where Gdansk, Poland is now on the Baltic Sea. And uh, my grandmother's family uh, immigrated from Hungary to Alsace to St. Petersburg. And in 1900, she was born in Danzig and immigrated to New York. So the work will be about her immigration and something that I focused on in 2000. So there was never a time appropriate to uh, show it before. Yeah. Well, could you um, tell the audience how they can get in touch with you. Um, I know your work definitely is for sale, and yeah. I'm sure that um, they would like to know what your um, uh, Instagram. And oh yeah, my Instagram account everything. is. My friend said it's more like a documentation, but I put videos on that of shows I've had. I have announcements of work, and that show will go th July through August. And Instagram.com/slash. Erica with a C E R I C A H, middle initial, and then Adams A D A M S, uh, and then another slash. So it's Instagram.com slash Erica H Adams, and another slash, and that will send you right there. Yeah. Well, you've got a great name because it's nice and <laughs> short, right? It's short, 
there's some, there were some people on the show that had a name this long. Oh, yeah. So we have about two minutes left. And um, what would you um, like to um, have uh, as your closing thing? I thought, well, um, you just talked about what you did overseas. Oh, and, um, yeah. Um, so what do you plan for 2025? Um, I'm planning a, another show um, of work that I've been doing since 2024. I mean, not everything will get in this show because it's two shows together. And so by 2025, I'll have a lot more work. And I'll have probably, I haven't decided exactly where I'm going to have the show. I mean, I have two possibilities that have been talked about. So that will be also on the uh, Instagram account. It will be on your Instagram yeah, account. That's yeah. great. Um, I was wondering, um, what do you think? I mean, at, at well, this is kind of it's a minute left, but um, I ask this only once in a while, but and it, I don't know. Um, the time is ticking down. Um, AI, what do you think about that? Oh, well, you know, people are afraid of anything new they, and they're utopian yeah. about anything new. And it will make a lot of jobs obsolete, but it will open up other fields. And as far as I artwork, art. I don't think it's going to change people's creativity. No, neither no. do I. And that's what another artist said, too. Yeah. That, I mean, you can't take that away. Yeah. Some people think you know, AI will be smarter than us, and if it is, we'll learn from AI. That's a, exactly. And we programmed it, so I mean, right. <laughs> it's not going to be that smart. Not going to be that smart, right? Well, we got about twelve seconds left, and um, going down to nine. And um, it was wonderful to have you on, and thank you so much for coming, Erica. Thank you so much. That was this such a great presentation. I'm so happy to meet you. Me too. Thank you so much. Stay well. You too. Bye, folks.